Hello everyone and welcome back to a very special episode of the Root of the Sounds podcast with your girl Anne with Anne. If you are new here, welcome to the show. It is honestly such a pleasure to have you here. Today, it's a special episode because I am rewinding back some time and taking you on a little journey that I had when I went to Lindau. Now, this place called Lindau is in Germany, southern Germany to be more specific, and it's a little um, unknown gem to many, but it's really associated with the Lindau Nobel Laureate Awards. So basically, this is a time where uh, Nobel Prize winners um, in specific disciplines such as medicine, physics, chemistry, um, come together with up and coming young scientists from all over the world um, for a conference that lasts a whole week. And it's a wonderful opportunity to network, to learn and to really be inspired. So I went because I was afforded the opportunity um, to win a travel grant by the Lindau uh, team and uh, in association and, and with support from the um, African Academy of Science in South Africa, um, who also helped to get me there. I had the wonderful time to cover this is truly life-changing um, event. I know many people say something is life-changing. And even when I went and I was being briefed about what I would expect, everybody kept on saying this will change your life. And honestly, this really changed my life. And um, I, I don't even <laughs> I don't even know exactly how to put it into words if from the beautiful scenery to just meeting the amount of people to the cultures that all came together and to the science, to the breadth of science. It was absolutely spectacular. I came back so inspired and uh, my eyes and um, were really, really expanded. So what's going to happen in this particular episode is that I had a wonderful opportunity to chat to some um, young scientists, particularly Africans or with African descent, um, who were in attendance at this conference. So that's what you're going to see in this episode. So you'll see people who were nominated by the institutions or specific scientific body in their regions who came to attend. They're going to briefly tell us where they're from, what they do, and um, it'll be short and sweet and you'll be inspired. And hopefully you can also attend one of these meetings. Every year there's a theme. This year was very specific to physics, uh, which is the 73rd one um, in 2024. Next year it will be chemistry and it rotates similarly where the following year will be medicine, et cetera, et cetera. So enjoy. Um, be inspired and just take a look at all the wonderful things that came from this really, really wonderful um, event that I had the opportunity to attend. Hi, Redris. How are you? I'm okay. And you? I'm okay. Thanks. So okay. please let us know where you're from and where you're currently based. Okay. I'm from Cameroon and I'm currently based in South Africa. At? Yeah. University of Johannesburg in South Africa. Fantastic. So yeah. how did you end up here? What is your story of getting to Lindau? Okay, um, one morning I just woke up and then I saw an email. Like mm -hmm. that's the first thing I do in the morning, checking my emails. And then I saw an email uh, from TWAS, the World Academy of Science, saying that I've been nominated to apply to the Lindau meeting. Mm. So I first thought it was a scam because I was like, <laughs> how come? Yeah. And then I actually Googled the name of the person who sent the email. And then once I went online, I actually saw it was like one of the big person in the twas. And then that's how I was like, okay, let me then click on the link and see what's there. And that's how I follow the process. And I'm here today. Lovely. Yeah. So this is day five. Day, yes. yes, day five of the meeting so far. Yeah. Um, what were some of your expectations before you came here? Uh, interacting with the maximum number of people, yeah. meeting the Nobel laureate and talk with them, like hear about their stories and the stories also of other students and so on. Yeah. And have those expectations been met? So far, yes. I think like one to ten. Maybe I'm at seven now. Okay, but seven. I still have two days. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. still time. Yeah. Were there any specific laureates where you were like, okay, listen, I have to have a meeting with so and so? 
I think the ladies. Uh -huh. I had to pay. I had that special attention on the ladies uh, to actually know a little bit because me, I'm so as a woman, we mm. tend to identify ourselves a little bit with other women. So I actually attended the talk and then it was so amazing to see how simple they are, how interactive they can be and how the story is like, I usually say uh, there is musician, there is football players and then we have our stars and mm. these are our stars. So yeah. I think meeting each of them is actually a particular moment. Oh, uh, lovely. Yeah. And so let's get back to why you are here, the physics. Yeah. Yes. So what is your research area of interest? Oh, I basically work on experimental condensed matter physics mm -hmm. where we synthesize materials which are rare earth based and then we study their properties. Okay. So the properties that we study depends on what we want to achieve. So now I'm actually focusing on samples that can have applications in the energy sector. Mm -hmm. So we synthesize what we call the pyrochlor, the perovskite, and we actually see what we can get in terms of their optical properties and so on. Mm. Yeah. Oh, lovely. And uh, you've just completed your PhD recently. Yes. Congratulations. So what is next in the future for you? Um, I think I need to have that real starting point with my research now. I mean, as an independent. Yeah. Not completely independent because if you work as a postdoc, you still belong to a group. Yeah. But I feel like it's the great time for me to now have some achievement in terms of what I can do in terms of research. Mm -hmm. And also if I can do some lecturing, because this is what I'm passionate about. So okay. I really have to, I really want to keep my face in the academy and also do a lot of research. Okay. Yeah. And do you think now with you being here, um, interacting with various different people from all over the, the world, it opens up um, opportunities for you to expand your research in terms of collaborations, etc. Yeah. yeah. It actually does a lot because... Um, it is very difficult to actually just put on someone here and it happens that you're doing exactly the same thing. Mm. So what happens most of the time is that you can discuss with someone, you don't do exactly the same thing, but you can always find a point where your research meets. Mm. That is particularly for condensed matter uh, people. And I'm not talking about astrophysics, whenever I like astro and particle is something different. Yeah. But when it comes to um, condensed matter in general, there are actually a lot of different research that people can do. But as we're talking, we always find the time to find one spot where our research meet. Mm. And whenever we exchange cards, I usually do that thing, like I take that one or two words that qualify the research of the person and I write it at the oh, back of the card so that smart. next time I will know that actually I talk with this person at that moment and mm. he said this and that. Yeah. yeah, that's very smart because, yeah. you know, all of you are going to be very big people in, oh, in, we have in the hope. future. <laughs> I mean, you already <laughs> are because you are here. So we're I think, working for, yeah, we, yeah. at least now you know that there was that moment in 20. Yeah. 2024. 2024. Yeah, with this moment. Yes, yeah. where this started. Yes. Um, parting words for somebody who is inspired by you, not only for you being here at Lindau, but just in general of your trajectory and your research um, mm. trajectory. I, I didn't get your question. Well. I was saying, um, do you have any parting words, words of inspiration, motivation by someone who is inspired by you? What would you say to them? They should never stop dreaming. Mm -hmm. They should never feel like something is impossible for them. Yeah. I mean, if you have never tried and tried and tried, don't say it's impossible. Because I think four years ago or even last year, I didn't see myself being at the Lindo meeting. Mm. So I think it's a privilege. And uh, that makes me feel like I can actually do more. Yeah. And again, we see the Nobel laureate when they tell about their stories, like the discoveries. They were just like normal people mm. being in the lab, working, working, working. And then one day they just got that, that thing. As I'm sure they couldn't even believe how big it, it's going to be. Yeah. Because that's the story. They all say that they didn't work for the Nobel Prize. Mm. Actually, but they ended up being Nobel Prize. Yeah. So I think that is motivating. And we should actually keep that in our mind. Like just work for the sake of working and doing your best anytime that you're doing something. Mm. Yeah. Love it. Lovely. Thank you yeah. so much. It was Thank so lovely you. chatting to talk Thank to you. you. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank One. you. Hi, Jared. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You? I'm good. Thank you. So 
Jared, tell us where you're from and where are you based? Okay, so I'm from Barbados in the Caribbean, and I'm based in London, Ontario, Canada, for my PhD research. Fantastic. So you are here at Lindau. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tell us the story. How did you end up here? Oh, that's a great question. So initially, I didn't know about Lindau at all. Yeah. Um, my directors of my program, they presented the opportunity to me, and I actually applied through the open application. So okay. I had two rounds of, of applications, the first round and the second round. I completely forgot about it. And then I got the call that I was invited and was really excited. So I was sort of a winding path, but yeah. I'm glad I'm here now. Okay. So I've heard with some people, they were unaware of Lindau until they saw the application. Was it similar for you or you had an inkling of, wait, there's this meeting that happened somewhere in Germany. Um, yeah, what what was that sort of the same response for you? Very similar in that I had no idea that this meeting existed. I did not know the history behind this meeting. <laughs> Didn't know it existed, but it is a really, truly amazing experience. I'm mm. glad I you know, knew about it, glad I was able to come. But before, never even heard of it, no. And um, so you did you have some expectations finally when you got that acceptance? Like, okay, I'm going. Yeah, I, I think it was sort of surreal to think that, you know, I've never met, first, I've never been to Europe, never met a Nobel laureate. Yeah. So I think my expectations were, well, this is going to be truly a life-changing experience. And really and truly has been, you know, meeting people from all across the world, from different cultures, yeah. talking to the Nobel laureates. It, it sort of lives up to my expectations, even though it's been a packed schedule. Uh -huh. It's been good. Oh, it's been a packed schedule indeed. Okay, so let's talk about your research. Yeah. Um, what is your area of interest? Okay, so my area of interest is in lung cancer. So mm -hmm. specifically using artificial intelligence and the medical imaging from lung cancer patients mm -hmm. to essentially predict which patients can do worse after their surgery. Okay. And then if we can predict that, we can give those patients more aggressive treatment, like radiation therapy or chemotherapy so that their cancer will come back after their surgery. So that's essentially what we're trying to do, personalize lung cancer treatment. Fantastic, which is really applicable. Um, so can you just briefly tell us, if you can, how it actually works? Yeah, so essentially when a patient has lung cancer, they usually get medical imaging, which is called a CT scan, so mm -hmm. computer tomography scan, and a PET scan, so mm -hmm. positron emission tomography scan. And both of those scans, they're used to determine the stage of the patient. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more information inside these scans that aren't being used. And yeah. my group thinks that if we use artificial intelligence, we can extract more information from these scans to better differentiate which patients are going to do worse. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we put those medical images inside deep learning models, and deep learning models figure out patterns in the imaging so they can then predict which patients are going to do worse. So essentially, trying to find a needle in the haystack in the medical images. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you feed it specific information and then it gives you a specific output. Correct, correct. Okay. So it gives you sort of a range between zero and one of right. how likely that patient is to have treatment failure. And then you sort of present that to the clinicians so okay. they can, it's sort of an extra tool in their toolbox to determine what they should do or what treatment they should give the patient. Yeah, that was going to lead me to my next uh, question, that who is the end user? So it's for the clinician. Yeah. Um, and so far, have you had any responses from clinicians who have tested out this model yet? Yeah, yeah. So we, after we built the model, we built sort of a user interface for the clinicians to use. Mm -hmm. And we had them run through the user interface with different patients. And mm -hmm. we found that they thought the interface was very efficient and it actually helped them, you know, make decisions for the patients. And it actually also improved the performance of the clinicians um, in, that, in that study. So we've actually found that it seems to be working well with mm -hmm. clinicians, but we need to do more clinical trials to see how well it's actually going to perform in the clinic because these are retrospective studies. Yeah, yeah. So you have to sort of like validate the results. Yeah, um, an interesting question, because um, you presented um, yeah. at the Next Ger Generation talk. Congratulations. Thank Your you, talk was you. so amazing. It thank was you. very well received. Um, an interesting question I think that was asked, and I think I'd also love to ask it here for the audience, is can this be applied for other cancers apart from lung cancer? Yeah, so essentially my work is specifically with lung cancer, but my group looks at a lot of different cancers. So mm -hmm. we're looking at esophageal cancer as well. So, and then there's another person in my group that's also looking at brain cancer. Okay. So essentially these imaging methods can be used and applied to different cancers, but you need to train the model with that data set of the different cancer. But once you do that, we believe that there's information that can 
sort of differentiate patients no matter what cancer they have. You okay. just have to train the model. Yeah. Okay, speaking of patients, um, I'm sure you had to collect some data. Um, I want us to talk about uh, possibly lifestyle choices. Can it can it create a different a difference, or even the the most obvious one, race as well? Because you know, medicine is biased in terms of the type of information that is out there. So, um, how does that work in terms of the way that you approach your research? Yeah, I'd say that's almost like the number one thing that can affect these models. So yeah, what data you feed the model will directly impact. How that model is going to perform yeah so essentially in my work i you know collected patients from north america so from a canadian institute yeah and an american institute and that data is inherently biased yeah. because the demographics of those patients are very different to mm. potentially patients in sub-saharan africa yeah right yeah. so essentially we need to get those other data sets and sort of retrain the model or update the model weights so we could apply it to different data set so essentially we need to just be responsible with how we present our results mm. say you know these are the results that we have gone but we use these data sets to get yeah. these results and in the future we hope to expand them to other low-income countries so you know everyone can use these type of models i love that i love that and i think it's great that you're already thinking in that in that direction because usually science does not so i uh, thank you for this interesting uh, talk so um from somebody who might be listening and they're like wow i'm inspired by you jared your journey so far um what are some words of wisdom that you'd love to impart to our audience that's a great question um i think for me something i've always tried to, to follow is to just do what you enjoy yeah so i think once you do what you enjoy things just come along after that because yeah. you know if it's something you enjoy you feel more passionate about it you put more work in it inherently and i find that's when the best results come where you do things that you enjoy so i'd say that's the best advice i could give just follow what you enjoy and, and things will come oh fantastic thank you so much jared it was lovely chatting with you today thank you, thank you very much for the opportunity sure bye Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Anne. How are you doing? I'm all right. And how are you? A little bit tired, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please introduce yourself uh, for, us, um, uh, for, the, for the audience. Um, my name is Chilufia, and I'm from Zambia. I'm a particle physicist, uh, currently doing my postdoctoral research at the Brookhaven National Lab in the U.S., but I'm based at the European Organization for Nuclear Research in Switzerland. Lovely, Julia. Yeah. So how are you at a U.S. organization, but you are right. in a European organization? Talk to me about that. Right. So um, in particle physics experiments, we usually deal with large-scale experiments, like the Large Hadron Collider, which is based in Geneva, Switzerland. And these kinds of experiments usually need, like, large collaboration, mm -hmm. one person cannot do the job or 10 people so you need as much manpower as possible the united states is an associated member of uh, the atlas experiment uh, at cern so they do base some of their personnel to meet the person power at the experiment site so that's how it comes sounds so interesting it's so fascinating so how long have you been part of this um, research project uh, so I started, um, I was a part of CERN since my master's, oh, wow. since I was a master's student. Um, so I uh, started collaborating with them since 2013. Wow, that's really huge. But CERN is such a like well-recognized global institution. So huge congratulations on you. Clearly Thank you. you're doing the things because you are still there. <laughs> Speaking of doing the things, what is um, some of the research that they're actually conducting there? So I would not go into the details, yeah. but just to maybe mention um, there are different types of physics, as yeah. we have learned in Lindau. In particle physics, we are trying to answer some questions about the fundamental makeup of our universe. Yeah. So we're trying to understand the smallest things that make up our universe, yeah. you know, and how they interact together. So like when you're building a house, you get cement, you get sand and whatnot, and you mix together. Yeah. So in a similar way, we are trying to understand at very basic level what built our universe. Yeah. Lovely. That's such a wonderful <laughs> explanation. So how did you end up here at Lindau for this wonderful week of physics? Yeah, um, I mean, 
I still feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> Being here, it's like, so in 2020, when I was finishing my PhD, uh, my PhD was funded by the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World. They are affiliated to the World Academy of Sciences. So during the uh, Nobel Laureate meeting in 2020, during the pandemic, which was online, I was nominated by the World Academy of Sciences. I, I had never heard of Lindau until I saw an email saying you have been nominated. I <laughs> Like yeah. how? So yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, clearly, you probably looked up, looked it up, and were, and then you realized, okay, this like is this is big exactly <laughs> like. But to be honest, so I I, I looked it up. I went to the uh, online uh, meeting, which was interdisciplinary for all uh, Nobel categories. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, this is real. I saw some of the Nobel laureates online. But then when I was asked to come now for the, when I was invited to come for the physics, physics dedicated one, to be honest, I got on the train and I was like, maybe this is real. I know I've been booked a hotel and everything. I'll go maybe, and I struggled to find, to locate my hotel. I'm like, this is a sign. It's not, I'll just get here. Switzerland is close. It's like, it's okay. If I don't find it, I'll go back. <laughs> it's still, okay, it's still so surreal. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, man. And what are some of the big moments? I know you said it feels like a dream, but in this wonderful dream, which is a reality, Father. Right. What are some of the best moments that you've experienced so far? Probably, like, having an open exchange with the laureates yeah. and just seeing that they are normal people like yeah. us. They're just everyday people, you know, and many of them even have like a real personal life. Like yeah. sometimes when you, when you don't meet these people, you just think they're like books or in the lab, like trying to, but they really do have a life outside of their research. So yeah, it's been nice getting up and, you know, up close and personal, let me say. So yeah. Yeah. And I mean, apart from just meeting the Nobel laureates, you've also had an opportunity to meet um, other young scientists as well, not mm -hmm. only from Africa, but from across the globe, because there's over right. 600 of you here, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, interacting with, with other young scientists, has it given you maybe that sense of, wait, there can be some collaborations for future research, you know, that type of inspiration? Yeah, I, it, it has been really nice I'm meeting so many young scientists, not just from, I actually haven't even met many particle physicists, okay. like from different fields, learning about their research, exchanging ideas. And anyway, I can say uh, already that yesterday um, I did give a talk on physics education and research in Africa and how much we are lagging behind. And after that talk, I have been overwhelmed by how much many um, young scientists have asked, you know, to collaborate and to do some outreach in Africa. So this is, yeah, I'm really amazed. That's amazing. So it's I been a imagine. great platform, actually. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, what, can you tell us more about this talk? Because really, the topic itself is such an important one. Right. Um, what are some of the key highlights that you'd like to maybe share in your findings and some of the things that you shared at the meeting? Okay, so, so the main motivation for me to give this talk is in my field of research, where we deal with large-scale experiments and we need many collaborations, um, like many members, uh, many nations to come together and collaborate, we see a large gap in Africa. So we only have two countries, for example, in the Atlas experiment at CERN, South Africa and Morocco, that are, are part, you know, and yeah, this is a bit of a concern. So this is the problem that I was presenting and trying to, and presenting some of the reasons why I think this is the case, why we are lucky. And we have heard a lot in this meeting and we know already how much physics is important. Um, it's driven technology forward. It's um, important for economic development, you know, uh, globally. So we shouldn't be lagging behind. <laughs> so, what yeah. What an important topic and what an important and I hope that these invitations to the outreach really do uh, manifest into real, you know, moments of change and uh, 
can look back and be like, yeah, because of that talk and in now 2024, these are some of the results that actually happened. So huge congratulations on that. Yeah, and maybe one other thing, um, there was a discussion on science diplomacy. Yeah. So that was great as well. This um, we A discussion was open on how we can... Uh, change things through science diplomacy, like learn how to talk to our governments, because yeah. one of the major factors yeah. for, for this problem is, you know, lack of funds yeah. from our governments. So that collaboration on science diplomacy is also great. Yeah. Thank you so much for chatting with me, chatting about the research, about the work, and hopefully we'll see you here one day as our first African woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nobel laureate. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Apparently, there were there's been two who were attendees, and now they're Nobel laureates. So why not? Why not? <laughs> Thank you. Today, I have Solomon with me. Solomon, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Um, Such a pleasure to have you on. Thanks. First things first, tell us where you're from and where you're currently based. Uh, to begin with, my name is uh, Solomon Joseph. I come from Kenya. And currently, I'm stationed here in Germany yeah. at the city of Freiburg, the University of Freiburg. Okay, give us a bit of context. We are in Lindau. How far is where you are from where we are right now? Uh, by train is like uh, three hours. By bus is also close to three hours. Okay, so in this context, it's pretty close, right? I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So how did you even end up here um, at Lindau? What was your story? Science. Science, And yeah. to be specific, physics. Uh-huh. Without physics, I could not be here. Okay. And with the physics, what type of physics? Tell us about your research. <laughs> it's, fine, it's fine. It's fine. Solomon, what is your research area of interest? I am working on optoelectronics. Okay. So tell us more about that. Electronics are currently... There's a lot of research that is going on the electronic application mm -hmm. with an aim of getting good quality material for energy saving or energy storage. So my research is based on trying to bring in organic semiconducting material in the field of organic application. But since these materials are polymeric in nature, mm -hmm. the chains are highly entangled. When I mean by chains, Imagine you are having a bowl of spaghetti okay. that is highly, that, 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 that is well cooked. Yeah. So it is so difficult for you to pick out oh, one thing. Yeah. Of, so that's how these polymers are. Oh, okay. And when they are in that state, it is so their properties are not as good as they're supposed to be. They have low efficiency and so on. So for you to improve these properties, they yeah. need to align all those polymer chains in a particular direction. Wow. Okay. And that one is done by what's called polymer crystallization. Okay. There are several methods of polymer crystallization mm -hmm. that are being currently applied, but they have some challenges in terms of the kind of equipment that are, are required for yeah. the purpose and also the time required for you to do the crystallization, yeah. which are not economically liable for the high for the industrial application. Mm -hmm. So to do this, I am coming up with another way of forming such crystal via a symbol illumination with the light. Okay. What I'm just doing is that I'm taking these polymer molecules, mm -hmm. then I give them a photon of light that uh, of a specific energy, okay. and then I am able to, and to, to remove the entanglement mm -hmm. and be able to align those polymer chains in a particular way. And so far, the data has shown that this process has gave some material or they have gave out some material the enhanced property mm -hmm. which includes uh, an, an improvement in charge carrier mobility mm -hmm. an improvement in um, in photoluminescence uh, quantum yield efficiency yeah. and so on oh wow sounds like such fascinating and we wish you all of the best. Thank you so much. Because it's really applicable to so many parts of everyday life. Yes. So back to Linda and why you are here for this wonderful week of physics. What are some of your expectations when you My came here? My expectation was to meet these crazy people. I mean crazy. I mean <laughs> these people who are doing something that can, that nobody imagined that yes. can happen. Yeah. That's been my pleasure meeting these people, uh -huh. having a one on, on, on one talk with them, yeah. sharing a table with them. Yeah. It has been so fantastic. So has it met or surpassed your expectations? Has surpassed my expectation. I have taken some photos with some. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
just for your photo. For oh. my future reference yes. that I met this crazy people oh fantastic so you know we are africans here but there's been almost no there are none um no african noble laureates particularly in the sciences um what is your take on that and like with you being here it's a very big challenge for us the people from africa mm. but we are hoping that someday sometime we will be there. Yes. I know we have the brain. Definitely. We have all what is required. Yeah. So it's just putting things in order mm. and trying to at least be to the level of how these people are. And by meeting these people, it's been a very good challenge. Mm. And I'm hoping that one day, one time, we will be there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you are here already, so it's just a matter of you. I'll be here it. as a Nobel, Nobel Prize Lord. winner. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Solomon, yeah. it was so awesome chatting to you. Hi, Collins. How are you? Hello, Anne. Uh, how are you doing too? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good too. So, Collins, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Where are you from and where are you currently based? Okay, I'm originally Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm from the southern part of Nigeria. So I like to brag that I'm from the re old re rich, uh, rich region. Yes. <laughs> where the <laughs> money is at. Uh, yeah, but I'm not rich anyways. <laughs> okay, so but I, I'm based in Malaysia. I'm a sure. PhD student at the Institute of Engineering Mathematics and uh, at University of Malaysia, Pelis. And Pelis is a small state mm -hmm. in Malaysia. Kind of a small state. I would not, uh, I don't want to compare it to Lindau. <laughs> Is it bigger than Lindau? Yeah, it's bigger than Lindau, I will think. Uh, but it's a, it's a small town and doesn't have traffic. So I love to stay in cities that doesn't have all these traffic issues. So, sure, so sure. <laughs> so what are you doing at the at in Malaysia? What is your research area of interest? Okay, so at Institute of Engineering Mathematics, I work on that. In, okay, my professor is in a different faculty. Yeah. But I am in the group of uh, uh, associate professor. Shamshuri Ali, mm -hmm. and uh, here my my PhD is in theoretical physics, and uh, my research actually focuses on studying thermodynamic processes in in quantum systems. Mm -hmm. So basically, what this means is that, uh, of course, if you know anything about uh, thermodynamics, it's basically about uh, studying designing um, uh, thermal machines and. And stuff like that. So originally, thermodynamics actually come, came about uh, many years back, and it was basically focused on designing heat engines and stuff like that. Okay. So in the second quantum revolution, we are kind of faced with a challenge of uh, designing uh, these um, efficient devices, and um, we are there are several kind of. Um, how to say it, uh, we, we have this uh, quantum heat engines that have come up as a mesh as a useful alternative to the classical heat engines in the sense that we are we believe that quantum proper quantum effects like entanglement and the rest of it can actually enhance uh, the efficiency of these devices. So in the last few decades, uh, there have been studies where people uh, model these quantum heat engines based with quantum systems as mm -hmm. the working medium. So my goal is that I'm studying this reversibility in hybrid quantum systems. And basically, for one of the thermodynamic processes that I've considered in this regime is uh, the reversibility. So this kind of affects the efficiency of these devices. And uh, if we are able to understand how this works in the system yeah. and kind of try to assess it and manipulate it in a, if for, for, for better words that can describe this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we can actually, this I believe can actually help us in the design of energy efficient quantum thermal machine. So mm. I'm just trying to make sure that a layman will understand what I'm saying. So it's, uh, <laughs> so this is it actually. Oh, that, but it sounds very important. I mean, for the everyday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if, if you were around with this, uh, Thing. I know that a lot of people wouldn't want to. I, I, I barely, you barely hear people talk about this quantum thermal machines aspect of quantum technology. Mm. So, a lot of people, you always hear people talk more about quantum, uh, quantum computing. Yes. And this other part of it. But I, the, the word quantum technology is actually an all encompassing word for all of these things that we're doing. Things. So, I would say that we are part of the efforts to achieve some of this. 
or we are contributing to the ongoing effort to achieve this kind of uh, technology. And they are, they are current. They are broad. It's a very broad field, and uh, so our contribution is from this kind of machine. That software. angle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Speaking about how broad uh, quantum, um, the quantum spaces, even physics, I mean, that's something that I've learned mm -hmm. <laughs> as a non-physicist during this week. Mm -hmm. um, how is your experience here at Lindau, um, has it enriched and sort of helped you expand your thinking and the way that you want to conduct research going forward with meeting other people? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Lindau actually is... Um, it's, uh, it has really impacted me. So mm. now I, I was talking to someone yesterday and I was telling the person that it might not directly impact your research. Of course, one week is not enough to get to do that, yes. but you may also be lucky to get someone that is doing exactly the kind of research that you're doing. But one way that's impacted is that you have the opportunity to pick the brain of these guys in terms of not only research, but life and uh, mm. source of motivation and uh, how to define your goals, sort of, uh, you know, so... Uh, it has really, really impacted me. So, for instance, I had the opportunity to talk to Anton Zellinger, and uh, it, it kind of um, two things I picked from him is he was doing something that he liked to do, mm -hmm. and there was this place of patience where he talked about doing these things over the period of 10 years. So it's kind of, um, yes, these things are fundamental for scientists and researchers, but, uh, uh, you know, hearing this from an eminent scientist kind of... Um, Inspires. Put, yeah, inspires you to see that, oh, so this is actually th how this thing should be. Mm -hmm. And then interestingly, again, is the fact that you get to meet your peers and yes. talk to them and exchange contacts and argue and disagree <laughs> on a couple of things and agree on a couple of things. Sure. It's kind of an interesting one. And then maybe if you are an introvert prior to now, it's an opportunity to probably <laughs> move out of your shell and yes. then talk to people and all of that. Fantastic. So obviously you had a lot of expectations and I'm sure they've already been met or exceeded even, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I would say I had an expectation because I knew I was going to make no that. Right. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know it's a, it's a regimented event. Mm. Okay, in quotes anyway. Because <laughs> I have to wake up at six o'clock to prepare. Listen. Uh, sometimes I have to miss the breakfast. <laughs> so it's, gonna, it's dense. I didn't plan this part of it, but uh, of course I have to be here too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, so wait, let's let's go back to the beginning. How did you actually end up being in Lindau? What was your story of getting uh, Okay, uh, I'm always excited to share this part because uh I, okay, let me start from Nigeria. So mm -hmm. I, when I was doing my masters, there was this call by the AS. Uh, AS is African Academy of Science. Yes. So apparently they have this uh, affiliation with uh partnership with uh, uh the Lindau uh Noble Lord meetings uh council. So this time it was a call for young scientists to, that are focusing on chemistry to apply. Apparently, I had a, my research at the time had something to do a little bit with chemistry. Okay. I'm a physics background, so I I gave it a shot, but I didn't I didn't hear from them in terms of the nomination. So of course that was not a workable process. Mm -hmm. So I said okay. So I, and then there was this Nigerian that was uh, selected that period uh, where he got this kind of nomination from Alexander von Humboldt. So I asked him, how did you get to Lindau? Mm -hmm. And he told me that um, he got it via a reputable body, kind of a professional body like um, the World Academy of Science and Alexander von Humboldt. So he told me, you need such kind of body to nominate you. Okay. Now this is a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, so fast forward to 2023. Yeah. I there was this call by the Malaysian Academy of Science that Linda is going to hold this year for physics. I said, oh, now it's back to my field. Mm. Uh, and then they they are seeking for students to submit, submit uh, request and then interview them and nominate them. I gave it a shot, but uh, I got to the interview, but I didn't really hear from them after that. Yeah. So I don't know if they went on to nominate anyone. But uh, while waiting for them to give me response, Sigma Psi also announced that they just struck a partnership deal with, uh, I don't know, I'm using deal, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the right word. So they just had a partnership with uh, Lindau. Yes. And uh, it's, uh, they are calling on young scientists to apply. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, I was actually, uh, I became a member of Sigma Psi, I think in the middle of last year. Or so what is Sigma Psi? Just 
Okay, Signify is a scientific research honor society based okay. in the US, uh, but have membership across the world. All right. It's kind of a reputable body in the sense that you don't get become a member just by applying alone, but you you need to be nominated to become a member as well. All right. So okay. it's a big body. So I gave it a shot as well, and then I was nominated. Wow. So when I was nominated, I was asked to submit the application to the Linda. So nomination actually is a necessary condition, mm -hmm. but it's not a sufficient condition to get you here mm. because you need to be thrown into a pool of other candidates around and then you now have to emerge. Mm. So this is another way I have to clear this because you've maybe nominated by a big body, but uh, you need to also emerge after the review process by the body, so by, by the, the council. Mm. So this is how I was nominated, I submitted an application and uh, luckily I emerged. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you and you are yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You too. are here. Yeah. <laughs> What an amazing opportunity and what an amazing story of getting here. And I hope somebody hearing you, um, yeah. they're also able now to start inquiring and, you know, being part of these reputable bodies mm -hmm. of their disciplines so that they can also get here. Yeah, yeah. so it's just a very, uh, just belong to a body that can recommend you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that works that way. There are several routes anyway. Yeah. But most of this is, you can actually apply by yourself directly, I think. Yes. I met someone yesterday that applied yeah. directly by himself. Okay. Open call or something. Uh, yeah, open call. So there are many routes. That one is one. And then the nomination from these bodies. And then this is the still. Fantastic. Yeah. What an inspiration. Yeah. So you have had an amazing journey. And I'm sure people back home, wherever you are, are inspired by you. Not only because of Lindau, but just, I think... Yeah, I think there's a very beautiful dot to connect. Yes. Uh, I'm a Nigerian, and then I'm in Malaysia, and then I'm being funded what? by the body in the United Imagine. States. Imagine! <laughs> what a story. So if somebody's like, wow, Collins, you are amazing, I'm inspired, what words of wisdom or advice would you like to leave them with? Be it about science, be it about life. Okay, I would say uh, never stop trying, just keep shooting, because... Uh, you never really know the one that is going to work out. Yeah. But uh, just uh, be committed to whatever you're doing. Try to have fun doing it. Don't be too serious. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Collins, it's been lovely chatting with you. Thank you for taking out the time. And I'm wishing you all of the best with the last couple of days, okay. hours left. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.